Hi, it's Elaine from Penguin Place Crafts, here for take two, because for some reason, take one had no sound. I'm feeling just a little bit overwhelmed today, so maybe my phone was also feeling sort of overwhelmed. <sighs> okay, I have so many things I want to finish in August. Um, I want to play with my new yarn from Hobie from the video from Monday. I have my mystery yarn challenge yarn that I need to use up. I have a custom order that I am like this far away from finishing. The problem with custom orders is I get all worked up like, oh, what if the customer doesn't like this? And then I sort of, I'm afraid to finish because once I finish and the customer gets it, then maybe the customer won't like it. And, and I want to do a little something extra, and that is slowing me down too. Okay, so Hobie and Mystery Yarn Challenge, and I have a, I want to make the peacock from one of the Zumo Gurumi books for my Ami Book Challenge, and I have the Scrap Yarn Challenge, where there's this little bit of wool, this little bit of cotton, and this acrylic. Now, if you're really observant, you might say, hey, that acrylic? Wasn't there a full skein? of homespun in there. It's down to this much. Because first, I made... Okay, I need space to put stuff. I'm running out of space. First, I did my, my Monster of the Month for July. Yeah, it's August. I'm running a little bit behind. Since I had, okay, let's go this way. You know when you're working with homespun and sometimes the ends, this one didn't, oh, this, this end, the end gets all frayed, like it starts to separate? I thought, ooh, that would probably look good brushed out for a mohawk, for an amigurumi. So my monster for July I made with homespun. He's got arms that sort of drag on the ground next to him. And he has a nice mohawk down his back. So it's on my list today to get this typed up so that I can get it off the tester. Well, that only used like one ounce out of the full skein. So I made a loaf cat. This is the free YouTube tutorial by False Bubbles. I still had some left. So I made... Where's the eyes the nose? Okay, there. I made a little loaf cat. And I will have to put the designer name up here because... I forget things sometimes and I don't remember where I got that pattern from okay oh and just you know every once in a while you just want to pull out some yarn from your scrap pile and make something quick and easy so I made a little stingray stingray sold pretty well at my last show I need to restock stingrays and I just missed the light box and he tumbled to the floor. Sorry, Mr. Stingray. So, I said, you know, Hobie Yarn, Mystery Yarn Challenge, Custom Order, Scrap Yarn. Well, then another thing hit my to-do list. I was browsing through Facebook and um, I saw a post by a local nonprofit called 
Western New York foster closet. They have a storefront in a local mall where foster parents can come in and get stuff for their foster child free of charge. For instance, if a foster family gets a call saying, we've got a newborn that needs a home, can you take this child? And they have nothing. The kids are grown. They don't have a crib anymore. They don't have baby clothes. They don't have diapers. They can go to the Western New York foster closet and pick up stuff for the child. So they do fundraisers throughout the year. And this fundraiser that they are gearing up for in September, late September, early October, is to sell cows with sort of a Build-A-Bear aspect behind it, where you could purchase a cow. There's a picture of that. But then there will be costumes and clothes that you can buy as accessories. And they said that last year, sorry, um, something, I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. Okay. <laughs> Those who are just listening to this are going to be back up the video like, what? What is she talking about? Okay. So they put out a call to crafters to make outfits for the cow. I messaged them. Um, our local community, our church community, just lost a, a really great guy. His name was Don. He and his wife, Fran, were very active in foster care. And uh, Don lost his, his battle with cancer um, a few months ago. I want to do this in memory of Don and in honor of Don. And I'm, I'm just, okay, I want to do this. I emailed them and said, you know, I've got these ideas. Has anybody said that they could make like a dinosaur costume or a bee costume or a bunny costume? Oh, those all sound great. No, nobody's doing that. But all I have is a picture of the cow and then another picture which is a diagram with approximate sizes so they said that I could come to their store and try my costume onto the cow just to make sure it fits see if it needs any fine fine tuning before I go into mass production they said they would like multiples of each costume because last year they sold 35 of whatever animal they were selling and you know, if they can sell like three different costumes per cow then that adds to the money that comes in for the fundraiser they were also asking for crocheted ice cream cones crocheted candies i could have done that but they said they really need the costumes okay so I'd love to go over there to their to their storefront and because you know what in the same parking lot as that mall is a Hobby Lobby across the street from the mall is a Michaels and a Joann's and a five below so I could easily go out there and do some shopping but I don't know whether to just start from the measurements in the picture and then go out there and see if it fits or like make this make a costume like a, a sweater with dinosaur spikes going up the back and a little hoodie I don't know whether I should try to make a cow with the same dimensions as the one in the picture so that I have something to try it on and you know go that way I don't know what I'm doing. So that sort of lends to a paralysis. Decision paralysis. Do I work on this? Do I work on that? Do I work on this? Do I work on that? And then there's another decision paralysis. I got an email. 
For several years, my friend Joanna and I would go to a ladies' conference down in the Binghamton area. We would split the hotel room and then we would do a craft show at this ladies' conference, Friday and Saturday. Well, the whole um, word, word, the conference has changed. Instead of being Friday night, Saturday, they've changed it to just Saturday and in more locations around the state. So now instead of being three and a half hours down to Binghamton, it's like 45 minutes up to Batavia. When they changed the format, that's the word I was looking for, format, format. When they changed the format, they eliminated the craft show aspect of it. Well, this year they're bringing the crafters back for the local one. It's only $20. It is 45 minutes away. Um, I would either have to leave incredibly early on Saturday, or I could drive up on Friday night and set up and then go back on Saturday. At first I was like, no, 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 no. Because there was a little note in the crafter description that says your display has to be broken down before the final session at 2.30. Well, a lot of my sales have been after the final session, like as people are leaving, they're like, oh, I've been looking at this stuff, you know, all day long, and oh, I want to get this. So I emailed the organizers and said, how much time will these ladies actually have to shop? And she you know, messaged back and said, well, you can set up on Friday night and you have an hour to shop while ladies are registering, like... People, ladies will start arriving at 9 and the first session is until 10. You'll have an hour when people are going around shopping. There's 15 minutes between each session and then you have an hour after the final session. They eliminated that thing about breaking down before the final session. So there will be an hour afterwards. I think I might do it. Just, I'll get to see some old friends and I think I might do it. So that would put me up to seven craft shows for this fall. I don't really have to do a lot of prep because I have a whole closet full of inventory that I am trying to sell off. So, <laughs> just, I don't know. Just looking down, it's like there's a little ball of yarn about yay big on the floor. I don't know where it came from, what it fell out of. I'm just like, ooh, I can make a stingray with that. <laughs> okay. So, I have my to-do list made up. I think I'm going to just go look at my to-do list, pick one item, and work on that until that is done. So, I can start crossing stuff off. Maybe I will feel a little less scattered, disorganized, overwhelmed, if I can clear my to-do list today. Um, one of the problems is I have that puzzle proofing assignment and I went through and I did all my favorite puzzles first. So now I am at the point where I have the puzzles that I don't like to do. So my quota of four pages per day is taking a whole lot longer but I think right now I'm at like 3.2 pages per day so in another day or so I'll have it down to three which will help a little bit but it's just I have so much to do and here I am making video for the second time today because I messed up the first time Maybe I will treat myself with just a little, just make a little something. Like make one of the mini stingrays. Maybe that's, that's why that yarn down there is calling out to me. Make a mini stingray so that I feel that sense of accomplishment and getting something done. And then I will feel better about today. Right? I filled the car up with gas. That, that should be a check off the list. 
I was down to like a 32 mile driving range. I shouldn't do that. But I was just so tired on Tuesday. That was yesterday. Tuesday, yesterday, I had blood work done. Fasting blood work, 730 in the morning. And my plan was, you know, get the blood work done, go to the grocery store, this by there, do my grocery shopping, fill the car up with gas. And I was just like, I want to go home and have some breakfast. I'm hungry. I'm tired. And I just couldn't bring myself to fill the car up with gas yesterday, but I did today. So I'm getting there. I'm not being a total flunky. I, I'm getting some stuff done. Okay. The sooner I go out to my chair and cross a few things off my list, the sooner I can play with yarn. I have a lot of laptop work to do today. Typing up patterns, um, editing the description on videos. I need to update some Etsy listings. Just stuff like that. So, I've got my bottle of water. So maybe I should just go after the laptop and do some typing. And eventually I will play with yarn. Bye-bye.